please turn your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6, reading from the verse number 13 through 18. Ephesians 6, reading from the verse number 13 through 18. If you are there, you say amen. If you're on your way, you say, God have mercy. If you don't know if you are there or not, look on the monitors. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm continuing with the series on uh, how to use the armor of God. And today I will be concluding on how to use the armor of God. Today is part four of how to use the armor of God. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins get about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation. Somebody say the helmet of salvation. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. Somebody say the sword of the spirit. The sword of the spirit, the sword of the spirit which is the word God. of God. Amen. The last verse. Praying always, not sometime. Yes, we are all reading this one. Amen. Amen. Ready, go. Pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the heavenly places. So, like I said today, I'm going to try to conclude. I will talk about the helmet of salvation. I will talk about the sword of the spirit and praying with all prayers. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And so, um, that will conclude uh, how to use the ammo. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will use me as an instrument. You will use me as a vessel to be a blessing to your people. Let me not speak my word. Let me speak your word. And Father, I declare that let your word be rightly divided and let your word, O oh God, pierce through every heart. Give everybody under the sound of my voice the heart of flesh. And Father, let not this word, this seed, fall on a stony ground let it fall on a fertile ground in the name of Jesus word of transformation motivation word of revival father I thank you in Jesus name amen, amen. somebody say how to use the armor of God Throughout this series, I have talked about how we have been taught how to put on the armor, but we have not been taught how to use the armor of God. And it is of no essence or of no importance if you put on the armor and you don't know how to use it. You see, when Goliath confronted the, the children of the Israelites and challenged the Israelites, and David came up and David went to the king, King Saul, and told him that he can fight Goliath. And Saul told him everything that he needed to tell David to discourage him, but David was very fair and he was very sure that he would be able to defeat Goliath. The Bible says that, and Saul took his armor and gave the armor to David. David put on the armor, but the Bible says that David didn't know how to use the armor. He couldn't move his legs. The armor was too heavy. He had never used it before. But don't forget, 
the armor was on him. But it was of no use because he couldn't use the armor. And so the importance of the armor of God is not for us to just put it on. It's for us to put it on and also be able to use it. And that is why I've been teaching on how to use the armor of God. And I've talked about everything, but I've not talked about the helmet of salvation. Somebody say the helmet of salvation. Somebody say the helmet of salvation. So the helmet of salvation completes the armor. The helmet of salvation. Now you got to understand and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God the helmet of salvation now you got to understand that after you have put on uh, the breastplate of righteousness the belt of truth you have put on your shoes and everything you have taken the shield of faith and everything you have to put on an helmet now the helmet of salvation the helmet covers what the head the head when you are going to a battlefield and you are in a warfare one of the most important aspect of your human body is the head is the head if the enemy is able to have access to your head he has finished you if the enemy is able to get hold of your head you are done why? Because your head comprises of your mental faculties. In other words, it comprises of your thought patterns. You must understand that the purpose of the helmet of salvation is to prevent the enemy's arrows from having access to your head. And so what are the arrows of the enemy that is targeted at your head? Your meta faculties. Somebody say meta faculties. Your thoughts. You must understand that this battlefield is the battlefield of the mind. The devil wants to have full control of your meta faculties, of your thoughts. The Holy Spirit also wants to have full control of your meta faculties and your thoughts. That is why whilst the spirit of god is speaking through to you through your thought the devil also is whispering to you through your thoughts the devil is bombarding you with all kinds of words and with all kinds of things to get hold of your thought you see when one becomes intimidated and scared and fear grips you the fear doesn't grip you as a result of your circumstance the fear grips you as a result of your thoughts as a result of your thoughts in other words if you are fully in charge of your thoughts and you have full control or the holy spirit have full control and charge of your thoughts there will be no fear why? Because the Bible says that God doesn't give us the spirit of fear, but of sound mind. But when the enemy gets hold of your thoughts, he begins to bombard you with all kinds of things that makes you begin to fear your circumstance and your situation. And so your thought is extremely important. That is why your thought needed to be protected by the helmet of salvation. Why the helmet? The Bible should have just said, put on the helmet. But he said the helmet of salvation, which means that your thought patterns and mind settings must be in alignment and compliance with the salvation that you have received and also with the word of God, which means that you are not thinking like the world. You are thinking like a kingdom citizen. And as a kingdom citizen, your thought patterns must be based on the word and what God is saying, the helmet of salvation. 
That is why the Bible talks about Romans chapter 12, the verse 1 and 2. It talks about the renewing of the mind. The renewing of the mind. For the mind to be renewed, it means that the mind before was in a state that wasn't good, wasn't pleasing to God. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so before our mind was in conformity to the world. Conformity to the world, which means that before we receive Christ, before we were saved, we think like the world. In other words, we listen to everything that the devil tells us. That is why the Bible says that now that we are saved, our minds got to be transformed. Our minds got to be renewed. And I like what he said. He said, uh, uh, do not be... And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove, that ye may prove. In other words, the renewing of the mind proves your salvation. And so, if you used to think a certain way before you got saved, God is saying, the way you think is not of me. If you have now been saved and you have a relationship with me, the way you think must be completely different. It must be in alignment with my will. It must be in alignment with my word. That is why the Bible talks about the, the renewing of the mind, the transformation of the mind, so that we can be acceptable. Renewing of your mind that ye may prove that that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Acceptable, good, and perfect will of God. In other words, you and I, when we are thinking, when we are contemplating, when we are operating in our imagination, everything must be in the conformity to the will of God. And whatever you are thinking about, your thought process, one of the things that you should be asking yourself, is it acceptable unto God? Is God pleased what I am thinking? That is why when it comes to sin, iniquity, and transgression, oftentimes we think that it is only in deeds. No. That is why David, when he comes before the presence of God and he is confessing his sins, he looks out for three areas. And this is how he prays. God, search my heart. Search my thoughts. Search my ways. Heart, thought, ways. Now, the heart and the thought has got nothing to do with deeds. The ways has got to do with deeds, actions. But oftentimes, we only consider the ways. And so Jesus put it this way. You have already fornicated or committed adultery. When you look at a woman lustfully. Do you know what that means? You have not gone to bed with the woman or the man, but just the thoughts you have seen. You need to confess and ask for God for forgiveness. <laughs> to the world, before they can say you, you have fornicated, you must be in the act. But to us, kingdom citizens, the thoughts. The thoughts. That is why the helmet is designed to protect our head so that the enemy cannot bombard us. And secondly, also, we don't the whisperings of the enemy, the whisperings of the enemy. Because listening to the whisperings of the enemy put your life at jeopardy in the battlefield. Because it makes you lose your focus. How? 
You are thinking, should I do this or I should do that? Should I do this or I should do that? Because earlier on, I told you that the Holy Spirit wants to gain total dominance and control of your mind. The devil also wants to gain total control of your mind. But the choice is yours. The choice is yours. I have set before you life and death. Choose. And so when it comes to your mind being renewed, God will not come down and do it for you. It's a matter of choice. One of the things that God has blessed us with is willpower. Willpower. And not just human beings, even angels. A lot of people think that angels are robotic. But it is not true. Angels are not robotic. Why do I use the word robotic? They are programmed to do the will of God. No, they have a choice. That is why the devil fell, because he had the choice. If there was no willpower and they were created robotic, the devil shouldn't have fallen. Willpower. And we also have the same thing. So you can either allow the devil to gain control of your mind or allow God to gain control of your mind. Are you with me? So that is the importance of the helmet of salvation to protect your head, your mental faculties from the enemy bombarding you and whispering to you and telling you things. You go to a doctor, the doctor says something, and the devil capitalizes on that and begins to use that to bombard your mind. You see, you will die now. You hear all the things that the doctors are saying, your life is short. You will not survive this. That is not the voice of God. That is the voice of the enemy. And to use the helmet of salvation against the whisperings of the enemy, you should be able to field your thought patterns and mind settings and your faculties with what God is saying. That is why the Bible says, whose report will you believe? The reason why the Bible says, whose report will you believe? Because there is another report. And that report is not of God. And there is one that is of God. But the Bible says, whose report will you believe? Because we have a choice. Willpower. To choose which one we want to believe. But with the helmet of salvation on your head, you are determined to think the way God thinks. You are determined to process things the way God processes things. And so your circumstance will be speaking something else, but the word of God is speaking another. And your faith is based on what the word of God is saying. Now, the helmet of salvation doesn't only cover your head and your mind and your mental faculties, but you got to understand also that the helmet actually covers your entire face. How many of you know that? Because when Paul was talking about the armor of God, he was looking at the Roman soldier who were in his day and his time the superpowers. And that was how they dressed the Roman soldier, the helmet doesn't only cover their head, it covers their entire face and it leaves just a small space for them to see through the helmet, which means that the helmet also covers their mouth. It covers their eyes and leaves just a little opening so that they can see through. It covers their nose. Why? The reason is this. Why not only the head, but the entire face? The entire face. Just as we have five senses naturally, we also have five senses spiritually. Are you with me? 
<coughs> Are you with me? You see, when you have divine encounters in the spirit realm, it smells some way. It smells some way. There are things you can smell in the spirit. There are things you can hear in the spirit. I will give you an example. And Elijah talking Ahab, I hear a sound of an abundance of rain. Where Elijah was standing, he was standing with the king. They were all talking. And so, what does it mean by I hear a sound? If it is natural, the king also should be hearing it. But the king didn't hear anything. Elijah said, I hear a sound. And Elijah said unto Ahab, get thee up, eat and drink. For there is a sound of an abundance of rain. When you look at the clouds, there was no sign that rain was going to fall. There were no lightnings. There were no thunderings. And so what Elijah was hearing, he was hearing it in the spirit. With his spiritual senses. And so the helmet of salvation doesn't only just cover your face, but it covers your spiritual senses so that the enemy will not contaminate it. So that you can have sharp discernment. And the times that we are in, I am telling you, it calls for sharp discernment. Why? Because you must understand, because you and I, we are believers, when the devil wants to plant somebody in your life, when the devil wants to use somebody as an instrument, as a vessel to attack your destiny, your future, your marriage, your career, your ministry, your calling, your health, he will not send an unbeliever. He will send somebody that speaks the same language. He will say somebody that will be quoting scriptures. He will say somebody that will be praying. And so to you, this guy is a believer. We are operating on the same level. He loves God. And oftentimes, these are people that say hallelujah more than anybody. (laughs) These are people that say praise the Lord more than anybody. Anybody. These are people that will ask you, oh, today did you do your quiet time? This morning I did my quiet time. I read the scriptures and I got this revelation. They are always telling you about revelation. They are always telling you about scripture that they have read and how it has blessed them and how it is going to bless you. Now, somebody like this or somebody like that, naturally you just assume that that person is a believer. For you to discern Beyond the superficial, you must have a strong discernment. Strong discernment. To know that this thing is fake. Yes, yes. To know that this thing is shallow, it's cosmetic, it is not deep. Yes. And you need discernment to know that. Amen. You see, I want to say this. Jezebel is dead, but he, her spirit is not dead. I want to say that again. Jezebel is dead, but her spirit is not dead. Jezebel, all of us know that she is evil, but in the book of Revelation, she is called prophetess. A witch, but she is called prophetess. And she was ministry in the church. He said, notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee because thou sufferest that woman, Jezebel, which calleth herself. Take note. Calleth herself. God didn't call her that. Calleth herself a prophetess. Watch this. To teach. What is he teaching? He's using the word. To teach. And to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And so how does she get them to seduce them? He uses the word to manipulate them. 
So she comes in the form of a woman of God prophesying, declaring the word, teaching the word, giving revelations. And that is what gets our attention. Why? Because he is speaking the same language. The same language with us. So we open up. And then that is where they begin to get the weapons. And they use it as their machinery against our lives and our destiny. And so the times that we are in, discernment is extremely important. Amen. That is why Jesus said, on that day I will tell them I knew them not. And they will say, in your name we cast out devils. He said, I don't know you. In other words, these are people that were using the name of the Lord. These are people that were quoting scriptures. These are people that claim to prophesy. These are people that claim to be men of God, women of God. But it was all cosmetic. It was just a facade. So discernment is extremely important. To be able to discern. Discernment means to be able to differentiate between the good and the evil. And that is the purpose of the helmet of salvation. That you are able to discern. You are able to know. Everybody don't see it, but you see it. She is speaking so nice, beautiful. Everybody is falling in love with her. Everybody is falling in love with him. But you can see through that person. It's not real. And everybody is asking you, why, why do you behave like that towards him? Why do you be behave like that towards him? Because you are seeing something that they are not seeing. And we call that discernment. Discernment. Your sensitivity must be strong and it must be intact. And that is the purpose of the helmet of salvation. Now the helmet doesn't only cover your nose. It doesn't only cover your mouth. But it also covers your ears. And I told you about the ears. What you hear. What you hear is extremely important. What you hear. What you hear. Because you must understand that... As much as you are a believer and the spirit of God is speaking to you, the devil also is speaking to you. But when you have the helmet of salvation, the helmet of salvation has the ability to separate to you, to decipher the voice of the devil and the voice of God. Because you must understand, like I said earlier on, the devil is very subtle, very cunning. Trickery. He has so many schemes. And so the devil can speak to you looking like God speaking to you. Now, the devil will not speak to you using curse words. Yes, sir. Because you don't need the revelation to know that that is the devil. If the devil is speaking to you using curse words. And so what he does is that he speaks lies and deception to you and he adds scriptures to it. He asked scriptures to it. He did that to Jesus. He said, Jesus, you have just fasted. 40 days, 40 nights. You are hungry. And truly, the man was hungry. He has not eaten. And he said, turn these stones into bread. Now, I want you to look at this logically. What is wrong? He has fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. He is hungry. And the devil is saying, turn the stone into bread, not for me to eat, but for you to eat. What is wrong with that? Tell me logically, rationally, what is wrong with that? There is nothing wrong. I'm hungry. You have ended the fast. You need to break the fast. But the question is this. Is it the devil that is going to tell me when to break the fast? In the first place, the purpose why I am fasting, I am not only fasting to, to, to receive power and to bring my spirit under the subjection Amen. of the spirit of God. I am fasting for an empowerment against the devil. Amen. And here is the devil giving me instructions as what to do. So Jesus responded, man shall not live by bread alone. 
But that is not even the trickery temptation. The trickery temptation was when he took him to a pinnacle and he said, listen, just drop yourself from that mountain. For it is written, he will make his angels take charge over you. And he was quoting the scriptures. He said, he will let his angel take charge over you that your feet will not dash against a stone. But to deliberately fall from a mountaintop thinking that an angel is going to save you and protect you, that is tempting the Lord your God is unscriptural. And the Bible admonishes us concerning tempting the Lord your God. So even though he quoted the scripture, the application was wrong. And so Jesus didn't do it. Deception, subtle. So the enemy sends people to you that speaks the same language. Talks like you. They're always talking about church. Do you know the next program that is coming up is going to be so powerful? very dynamic you know i'm looking forward to that program <laughs> you have no idea i've talked to all my friends my co-workers and everything we are coming in our numbers i don't know if you have invited anybody so you are like wow this lady really loves god this man really loves jesus christ he's inviting everybody fake fake somebody say fake fake, <laughs> fake. He or she has been planted to destroy you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But he knows, she knows your phonetics, your diction, your language. So he's speaking the same language for acceptance. But he or she is there to destroy you. That is why discernment is extremely important. Amen. Extremely important. The helmet. Of salvation the helmet of salvation it protects also your eyes somebody say my eyes, my eyes. somebody say my eyes. my eyes somebody say my eyes in fact when the roman soldier wear their helmet hardly will you see their eyes inside the helmet hardly will you see they are eyes inside the helmet because the the helmet the purpose why it covers most of the eyes for you not to see what you are not supposed to see Amen. that is why in the bible we have what we call not just the last of the flesh the last of the world but we have the last of the eyes yes, not just the last of the flesh not just the last of the well, but the last of the eyes. Which means that as believers, it's not everything that we can see. Fleshly. It's not everything. First John 2 16. For all that is in, in the world, the last of the flesh and the last of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world it's not everything that we can look at in other words when we are even watching tv it is not all the things that we can watch you remember when michael van vleemen was here he shared an encounter that he had that an angel revealed himself to him and the angel's eyes was bleeding and he asked the angel why is your eyes bleeding and the angel said no that is not my eyes that is your eyes that is bleeding and he said he was shocked and he asked the angel why is my eyes bleeding and he said because you watch stuff that has contaminated your eyes and the eyes referring to his spiritual eyes. And then he said he loved these horror movies. How many of you remember? Yes. The eyes. The eyes. The eyes. The eyes don't see everything. 
even though it is there to see everything. You must make a decision that these eyes will not see everything. Believe you me, I come to church, but I don't see everything. Oh, you don't know? Sometimes when you see me, I climb the pulpit. You know I'll be real with you. I climb the pulpit, and I'm standing like this, offering time. So just as I'm looking straight, I see that somebody is coming, and I, I, I realize this one is unseeable, and so I change direction like that. Or I change direction like this. Because I am not supposed, even in church, even in church, I am not supposed. Because somebody have just dressed like Jezebel. Who, you must understand that by the time you look like this, the devil speak to your mind. When you look, the next attack is your thoughts. There have been occasions where I have to speak to some people. Please, go and tell that lady. Cover herself. Find something. Cover. Cover. This is no club. This is the presence of God. Dress well. It is not a place where you come and you show your calves. Yes, we know you have your calves. Praise the Lord for your calves. Please keep it to yourself. So I'm standing there and, I'll, and then I turn the head like that. Looking at pastor's direction to maintain my anointing in the presence of God before it leaves me. Before it leaves me. The eyes. It is there to see everything. But you are not supposed to see everything. You are not supposed to see everything. Because if you are going to see the things and the pictures that the enemy throws at you, those pictures weakens your spirituality and your power. And one of the things that the devil is good at is bringing your past. Amen. The devil doesn't know the future. And so he's not able to bring you your future. It is only God that knows. But the devil recalls the past and he is able to bring the past. What am I talking about? So you look at that picture. Yes, the picture is no longer there. You are in a certain place. Where you have to be effective and effectual and the devil brings back that picture to weaken you. So even though the picture is not there, but the fact that you have looked at it, your spiritual eyes records that and the devil recalls it at will to weaken your spirituality, to weaken your power, your momentum. So it is not everything that you look at. Some of them close your eyes. Close your eyes. That is why Job said, I have made a covenant with my eyes that I will not look on a maid twice. Because by the time you look first and you look second, the second one is in. What do I mean by sin? Because the second one, a thought is going to hit your imagination. So he said, I have made the covenant with my eyes that I will not look on any maiden twice. If it is so important or if it is irrelevant, why will he make a covenant with God not to look on any maiden twice? You must understand that all this is the purpose why we need the helmet of salvation to cover.
to protect us from all the fiery darts of the enemy, from all the arrows of the enemy. And so you can put on all the other armor, but if you don't have the element in place, you are in trouble. Do you realize that all the footballers, they put on helmet? You know the purpose of the helmet to prevent concussion. How many of you know that? So that the head will not be injured. The brain will not be injured. And the only thing that can do that is for them to put on a helmet. The purpose of the helmet is to protect our minds against every onslaught of the enemy. So the helmet of salvation is extremely important. And then he talked about the sword of the spirit. And the sword of the spirit. And then he explains, he said, the sword of the spirit I'm talking about is the word of God. The sword of the spirit is the word of God. Now you must understand that this word is Christ. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word became flesh and tabernacle among men. So the word is Christ, and the word is two-edged sword, Hebrews 4.12. He said the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierced through the soul dividing he said for the word of god is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edges sword piercing even to the dividing ascender of soul and spirit and of joint and marrow and is a descender of the thoughts and intents of the heart i will repeat that again project it for me for the word of god is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. It means that the word of God is a two-edged sword, but it is more sharper than any other two-edged sword that you and I know. Now, and he said, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. In other words, what the sword of the spirit does is to separate the flesh from the spirit. It's to separate the physicality from the spirituality. That is what the word of God does. Now, why? Because it says soul and spirit. Your soul comprises of your mind, your will, your emotions, and all these things got to do with the flesh. And so when the sword cut, it separates the physical and the spiritual. And so you are able to discern what is of the world and what is of God, what is of the flesh and what is of the spirit. It is the word of God that gives you that enablement. The word of God, the sword. Of the spirit. And then he said, and of joints and marrow, and is a descender, descender of the thoughts and intents of the heart. A descender of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. I will dwell here a little bit. Somebody say, a descender of thoughts and intents of the heart. Now, he didn't say that the sword of the spirit is only a descender of thought and intent of the heart for the believer. But he just said generally that the sword of the spirit is a descender of the thoughts and intents of the heart. What it simply means is this. After you have dressed and you have put on your whole armor and you are covered, from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, your armor is not complete until you have the sword. 
then you are battle ready. You are ready to confront the enemy. You are ready to take the battle to the gates of the enemy. Because you must understand, when I started this series, I keep on telling you that the ammo, there is nothing, there was no provision that covers the back. And the reason why there was no provision that covers the back is because we don't run away from the battle because to run, you must turn your back. In other words, we are not battling and we are not warring from the defensive position, but we are offensive. In other words, we are attacking the enemy. This battle is direct. That is why the Bible talks about we wrestle not. We wrestle not. And when you talk about wrestle, you are talking about direct contact, direct combat. Face to face combat, shoulder to shoulder, eyeball to eyeball combat, face to face. So we don't run from the battle. We take the battle to the gates of the enemy. That is the purpose of the provision of the armor of God. So when you take your, the sword of the spirit, you are ready to confront the enemy. You are ready to attack the enemy. You are ready to go the offensive. Now, you must understand that when you hold the sword, the sword gives you the enablement to be able to discern what the enemy is thinking. Project the scripture again for me. You don't get it, I will help you. And it's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. In other words, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, is able to make you discern what the plans of the enemy is, both in thought and in heart. So if the enemy is going to attack you on the left direction, the sword of the spirit helps you to discern that the enemy is coming and you will be attacking from the left. The sword of the spirit helps you to discern that the enemy want to attack you from the right. Amen. And the reason is because so that you can position yourself. Amen. If I know that the enemy is going to attack me from the left, when the enemy comes at me from the left, I'm able to dodge the enemy. Amen. All I need to do is to pull myself aside. And when I pull myself aside, guess what? The enemy will just pass swiftly. And when the enemy pass swiftly, guess what? I'm holding my sword. When I turn my sword, I'm in a position to slay the enemy. And so the sword of the spirit gives you the enablement, the supernatural enablement to be able to discern what the enemy is thinking of you. In other words, the plans of the enemy, the, the, the diabolical orchestrations of the enemy, the strategy, the techniques, the schemes, the calculations, the impression, the conspiracies of the enemy, the sword of the spirit helps you to be able to discern it, to pick it up. And know that the enemy is going to attack at midnight. Amen. So at midnight, I am ready for you. Amen. Oh, the enemy is going to attack at this so so and so time. And so at that time, because you have an advanced knowledge, you are prepared and you are ready with your sword, waiting for the enemy to come. Sometimes you don't even wait. Immediately, you are able to discern and get the information. You enter into the camp of the enemy and you destroy them before they attack you. The sword of the spirit, it descends. It has the ability to descend the thoughts and the hearts. That is why somebody can be talking to you and the things that the person is saying is sweet. But you look beyond and above what the person is saying and you are listening to the heart of the person. The heart of the person. Because he is saying one thing, but the heart is saying another. In other words, what the person is, is not what he is saying, but is what is in the heart. That is why the Bible says that know no man after the flesh. Because if you try to know any man after the flesh, you have already been deceived. 
Because the world that we are living in, there is a lot of psychophants. There is a lot of hypocrisy and pretentious, pretentiousness. That's why the Bible says that if you want to know somebody, know the person by the spirit. How do you know the person by the spirit? They are hearts. That is why God said, I don't look at the outward countenance, but I look onto the heart. I look onto, which is the real person. The real person is the heart. What is in the heart? The content of the heart. The issues of the heart. A discerner of the thoughts and the intents. I've had so many situations where so many uncountable where I've had people who are talking to me and they are saying really great things but I know they are lying. And I don't say anything. I just look at them for them to lie. <laughs> it's true. They are saying great things, good things, nice things but I know it's a lie. I know it's a deception. So the question is how do you know that what they are saying is not true? The sword of the spirit. It divides. It separates the soul and the spirit. It separates the flesh and the spirit. It, se it separates the physical and the spiritual. The sword of the spirit. So how do you use the sword of the spirit? It means that you must stay in the word. You must be wedded. It is not enough just to pray. You must be wedded. Because you see, for your prayer to be effective, you must be wedded. Prayer and the word are twins. How are they twins? You will not be able to decipher and to fully understand and receive illumination from the word without prayer. And you cannot also be able to pray effectively and effectually without the word. Because when I come to God and I want to talk to God, I come to God based on scripture. Your word said. That is why Jesus, in all the temptation and in all his messages, he will always say, it is written. It is written. When you come to God in petitions and requests, you come based on scripture. This is what is written in your word. And based on what is written in your word, God, I want you to do so, so, and so, and that, and that. Because the word is our constitution. The constitution. You see, in a law court, the mediators, the attorneys that win the case, they are not the attorneys that are eloquent. Eloquency doesn't win cases. Amen. Being articulate doesn't win cases. Having a lot of diction and vocabulary doesn't win cases. You know what win cases? After you have talked, your talking must be backed with the constitution. So you talk and you say one, two, three, and based on the constitution and based on the law, this and so and so. That is what the judge listens to, not your rhetoric. Come in and be talking nice English and grammar. That doesn't move the judge, the law. So everything you say must be based on the law and it must be based on the constitution. That is why when the enemy even attacks us, we attack the enemy by based on the word. Yes. Satan, you can't touch my health. You can't kill me because the word of God says I will not die, but I will live to declare the words of the Lord. Amen. So Satan attacks you and says, this ailment, this disease is going to kill you. And based on the word, you speak back at the devil. And you tell the devil, it is written by his stripes, I am healed. And it is also written, he sent forth his word. And it healed them and delivered them from their destruction. So the devil is attacking you, bombarding you. But you attack the enemy and you speak back at the enemy, not with your yell grammar. Thank you for watching this message. 
For more information about this Columbia message University or the ministry, grammar. call us at 7-0-9-4-1-1-9-3-4 or visit us online at eagleschapel.com. And this affliction is going to destroy you. And then you speak back at the devil. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord God delivered him out of them all. Based on the word. The word and prayer, they are twins. They go hand in hand. The word is so deep that you cannot be able to understand the word without prayer. And you cannot pray effectively without the word. The word of God. Is potent, is powerful, is the sword of the spirit. If you are going to win any battle, if you are going to overcome, if you are going to be victorious, you must have your sword in place. Amen. You must in place. You must feast the word. You must eat the word. You must memorize the word. You must live the word. The word has to become the fabric of your life. Your life must be the word. That is the only way you can win the battle. That is the only way you can uh, overcome the forces of darkness. That is the only way you can stop all the manipulative acts of the enemy and the things that the devil throws at you. You must stand at all times on the word. The word, the sword of the spirit. Not you just using the sword of the spirit, quoting the scriptures to God, to heaven, but quoting the scriptures also to the kingdom of darkness. Because let me tell you something. The kingdom of darkness is, is not moved by your personality. The devil and the demonic forces and the kingdom of darkness is not going to flee away from you because you dress good. You smell good. You talk good. You went to the good, you went to good school. Your grammar is perfect. Your diction is off the hook. And when you put it together, it's off the chain. The devil is not moved by all that. The devil only responds to the word of God when you say it is written. It is written. It is written. That is the only language that the kingdom of darkness understands. It is written. The word of God. The soul of the spirit. That is why we must be embedded in the word. But you see, this generation, this generation has no word. We are not wedded at all. From the pulpit to the congregation. That is why you hear many people, pro today, I am not preaching, I'm only prophesying. I came to prophesy. <laughs> Read your Bibles very careful. It doesn't operate like that. Give me the word that will motivate, yes, lift up my faith, yes, and be ready for the prophecy. Yes, that is why, if I want to bring in a prophet here, I want to see if the prophet is wedded. I want to see if you are wedded. Because if you are wedded, your prophetic is assured. But if you are not wedded, on which basis do you give your prophecies? Because every prophecy must be in alignment with the word. With the word, the sword of the spirit. The sword of the spirit. The reason why this generation we pray a lot, little results, because we don't even know what we are saying in prayer. We are not wedded. Listen, in the olden days, when they have trouble, the believers, they have issues. And they want to come to the presence of God. This is what they do. They go to the scriptures and they look at the scriptures that speaks concerning their situation. And after they have gotten the scriptures that speaks concerning their situation, they come before the presence of God. And they begin to lay the scripture before God. Precept after precept. Test after test. God, this is what your word says. 
this shouldn't be happening to me. This is not what your words say. You, I need divine intervention. This is what your words say. I need favor. This is what your words said. I cannot be ashamed. You see, they bring the word to God. But today, we, we bring complaining. We bring complaining to God. Memory to God. No word. No scripture. Because we don't have time for scripture. I can bet my life on it. Most of you, you have all the translations at home. You have concordance. Somebody say concordance. You have concordance. You, you have New Living Translation. You have NIV. You have uh, King James. And the King James, you have two. Old King James, New King James. You, you have the word translation. You, you have parallel Bible. You have one Bible, but you have one Bible contains all the translation, but it's all for decoration. It's all for decoration. When was the last time you picked your Bible? Not in church. At home. And you read it. You studied it. Right now, even you don't want to be seen with Bible. So now people bring phones. Phones. Tablets. One of these days I need to teach on that. Because in the last days, uh, you will not have the chance to be using phones and tablets. Because before you can use the phone and the tablet, you must have the number of the beast. Learn how to have your physical Bible. Your physical Bible. Because with that, you don't need to have the mark of the beast to read it. But to use your phone and to use your tablet, you need the mark of the beast. See, 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 see. The Bible says it's a, it's a number of a man. But today, we don't like reading the Bible, holding the Bible. We don't even want to be seen with Bible. So people come to church, they don't have Bible. They are using their phone. A time is coming. You can't use that phone. You can't use that tablet. What is the purpose of having all these translations that you have bought? You have all the translation. Amplify, you have it. If you have to turn it upside down, fire apply, you have it. In other words, every translation in this world, you have it. But yet, you have not sat down one time to open it, to study it. How can you use the sword of the spirit? You have nothing in you. In other words, there are some of us, when we come to the battlefield, the devil weighs us. Paper weight. Paper weight. Uh, you have nothing. You are not weighted. You are not heavy. Just check you and know that uh, there is nothing in you. You are empty. Empty. No wonder the other day you were trying to cast out devil from that person. The demon started laughing at you. <laughs> you know why the demon was like, he's looking at you and saying, ah, empty man. Empty woman. You, what can you do? They're laughing at you. We are not wetted. We are not embedded in the word. We are not soaked in the word. The word is not the fabric of our lives. That's why we are losing battles. That's why the enemy is pushing us around. That's why the enemy is able to deceive us. But when you have the word, you have the sword of the spirit. The devil cannot mess with you. The devil cannot play with you. Next verse. Yes. Among everything I've said, this is my favorite scripture. Praying always with all prayer. So, after you have put on the armor and you have the sword in place, you are battle ready. You are battle ready. But to have the sword without prayer is a waste of time. And so he said this. Watch this carefully. Praying always. In other words, you don't pray when you feel like it. Today I'm in the mood. 
I am in the mood for prayer. Moti kabahaya su kabahaya. And then tomorrow, the, f- the spirit is willing, the flesh is weak. No. He said, pray always. In, in other words, whether you feel like it or not, pray. I am tired, but I am praying. I am not tired. I am praying. At all times. You don't only pray when you are under attack. You don't only pray when the enemy is throwing things at you. You don't only pray when you find yourself in precarious situation, unfavorable circumstances. That is No, you pray even when the circumstance is favorable at all times. In other words, you pray when it is bad. You pray when it is ugly. You also pray when it is good. Praying always. Always. Which means that when it comes to prayer, there are no vacations. When it comes to prayer, there are no holidays. Do you know that the devil doesn't even rest for one second? He is always on the go attacking us. He is always on the go pulling us down. Do you know that the devil doesn't sleep? He doesn't sleep because of you and I. He he is always cooking up some schemes. He is always cooking up some strategy, cooking up some plan that will bring you down, that will kill you, that will destroy you. That is why the Bible says that we should pray always. And always simply means I am driving by Tika Mahanta, Suka Bahaya, Morosi Kabahanti Kibiria Kataya, Malia Kabantu Kuburia Saka, wherever I am, I am praying. Listen, you can pray and you can train yourself in that area of prayer that even when you are sleeping, you are sleeping, your spirit is praying. I know what I'm talking about. Your spirit man is praying, even though your eyes is closed. Praying always. There are some of you, you only pray when church declares midnight prayers. You only pray when you come to church. Beside that, that's the end. But yet, we want the deep things of God. How can you receive the deep things of God if you don't know how to wait on the Lord and come to his presence and talk to him? How? Praying always. With all prayer, (laughs) praying always, praying always with all prayer. Now, when he says that with all prayer, which means that they are different, 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 different kinds of prayer. They are different, 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 different dimensions of prayer. And so he's telling us, as you pray always, pray also all the dimensions of prayer, all the different kinds of prayer, as it relates to the situation, the condition, the circumstance. Different strokes for different folks. In other words, there are certain situations it doesn't call for warfare. There are certain situations, it calls for intercession. It calls for supplication. It calls for what we call prayer of opportunity. Opportunity prayer, persistent, consistent, perseverance prayer. With all prayer, with all prayer. And so having the armor and having the sword is not enough. After you have had all that, you must be able to pray. Praying Always with all prayer, efficiency setting, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, which means that this prayer cannot be prayed in the flesh. You will have no results. To have the result, the prayer must be prayed in the spirit. In other words, there are some of you that, you know, you want to look spiritual. And so you see gift coming. Gift is coming all of a sudden. Moti kabaha. Hey, 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 Malusa ne kabaha. Moro su kabaha. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I receive it, Lord. Oh, the Lord speak, speak. Thy servant hear it. You see, because you want gifty 
to know that you are spiritual. All that you are doing is fleshly. It's not spirit. All of a sudden, you see Pastor Paul and your prayer change. Moto kapa, muria, sakapa, mota kapa, hey, matuka, lia kapa. Kung fu. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Listen, don't be deceived. We see all these things, though. We see all these things. Because you, you, you want somebody to know that you are spiritual, you are powerful. You are powerful. So martial art. You are doing all these things. We see all these things. Listen, it's flesh. 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 You know, I told you this story before. My old man, and anytime I talk about my old man, I'm talking about uh, Papa Agbishop. We were fasting, long fast. And we meet at the house to pray. You know, his inner circle inter intercessors. So we have fasted for a long time, and this man, he lost prayer. So when we gather like that, you are talking about hours. So your body is tired, you are weary, because you have not eaten anything, and a long fast, and intense prayer, because this man, you don't just come there and be praying, he won't resolve, what is the Lord saying? What did the Lord say? What did the Lord reveal? And all that, he want to know, tell me, you are not just there to while away time, you know? So, we were all tired, and so we were very praying strong and powerful and energetic, like when we started. But there was this guy, man, it's like his, his power and his strength was supernatural. It's like God himself entered into him and left us. The guy was praying with energy, with power, with strength. And the old man was rebuking and said, look, 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 look at all of you. Look at all of you. Sometimes when I look at you, I doubt if I'm the one who raised you. <laughs> and we're all ashamed. We'll be bowing our head, trying to hide, find a place to hide and other stuff. So on this faithful day, we have gathered again. So we're praying, praying, praying. This guy, you know, all that, you know, was praying, praying. And, you know, we are tired, long fast, then we are studying. You don't want to even move because the little energy, you want to con <laughs> conserve the little energy. So you don't have the time moving around and other things. You may faint, you know. But this guy, Muti Akata, Molia Sukapahai, giving up apakat, apakat and other things. Suddenly, he started vomiting. And when he started vomiting, fufu. <laughs> you see, you can't deceive God. Started for me to end. <laughs> the prayer ended abruptly. And you know, the old man was there. And don't mess with the old man. Say, ha! <laughs> we are praying on an empty stomach. And you... <laughs> Your stomach is loaded. No wonder the energy and the mobility and the strength. That vomit vindicated us that were truly fasting. You don't want to know what the old man did to that guy. You have no idea. Doubt with him was expelled was a spell because he couldn't take the deception. All that he was doing, it was fleshly. He wasn't praying in the spirit. Not praying in the spirit. Eye service. The Bible talks about eye service. Eye service. Eye service. Eye service. It's only when you see Pastor Grant that you want your tongues to be big. 
so you create move over ta ka 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 so ka 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 I see basuga musa ka pa sa ka 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 yes you think we don't know all these things we know we just look at you we don't say anything so look at look at all this look at all this you, flesh that is why no results no results no results if you are praying in the spirit, you are a lady, we know that you have a feminine voice. Why should you have to change it to a male voice? Uru kamada, lei kabata. Yes, yes. Because you want, you want to prove some point. It's all fleshly. The prayer is not being prayed in the spirit. Not being prayed in the spirit. Not being praying. You want your you want people to know that your prayer is so powerful, and so you have to change your voice. Change your voice. Oh God. God. You have to mention God in his eye. Oh God. Oh God. There was one lady. <laughs> you know, when we're growing up, we go to the same church and Anytime they ask her to pray, when we gather, they ask her to pray. We just look at one another's face like that. Because we know that trouble. All the words, when he's talking, she's talking, is different. When she's praying, it's different. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Come down with your power. You know, what is all this? What is all this? I remember when I was on campus university, when we are on a long vag, we go for evangelism in the remotest parts of the villages and other stuff. So there was this guy, the three of us, we went to one of the remote villages, you know, to evangelize and all that. And when we, you know, went and evangelize and everything, we were hungry because, you know, it's on foot, house to house and all that. We were on foot and so we're hungry and so we're ready to eat. And one guy made a mistake and called this other guy. This is real. This is not like story or something that was called this other guy. Man, I look at this other guy and say, my goodness, this hunger, we would die of hunger here. And truly, truly, let's pray on the food. We are saying things. <laughs> Praise and worship. Started with praise and worship. Sang God the songs. And then started. God, we thank you so much for bringing us here. For giving us the word to preach to these people. We know that these people, as they have received the word, they will be saved. Their life will be transformed. Next time when we come here, we will come and see the fruits of the seeds that we have. So, listen. We are here. Pray on the food. We are to eat. <laughs> we are hungry to eat. Pray on the prayer. By 10 minutes, prayer was going on. <laughs> I look at, yes, the food was getting, I look at the other guy. I told the other guy, whilst he was praying, I told the other guy, I said, I'm hungry. And the guy also said, so he was praying, we started <laughs> eating. And I have to tell you the truth though. We started eating and then he was praying, say, amen, yeah, yeah, more, man. <laughs> we're eating, we're eating. By the time he finished, we have finished eating. We left the leftover for him to eat. It's unnecessary. It's unnecessary. A very good friend of mine Bishop David Oyedepo hosted him. I don't know. Oyedepo took him, hosted him. After he finished preaching and everything, Bishop David Oyedepo took him to his house for them to have dinner and the other ministers and everybody. And then he asked him to pray. He wanted to impress. He was the one telling me he wanted to. So he prayed this long prayer. When he finished, David Oyedepo told him, never again. Never Again, will we have food like this, getting ready to eat, for me to call you to pray? He said he was so embarrassed 
And from that day, he learned how to pray, special prayers for food. Father, we thank you for this food. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Simple. Jesus gave us an example. When he took the four loaves of bread and the two fish, he said, Father, I thank you. Immediately he said, thank you. He started breaking it. They started eating. Please, don't come and bind and loose before we eat. But because people want to prove a point, show that they are spiritual, they are sanctifying, they are binding. Every witch that have spitted on this food, we bind. Every evil eye looking at this drink, we bind. Every evil eye monitoring spirit. Monitoring spirit for food. We are binding loose. You see, all this is flesh. Lies. Pretense is not real. That's why we don't get any results. Don't get any results. Zero. So a lady is in the church. He has seen some man in the church that he lies. So Pastor Grant says that vice versa. Or a man who has seen, you know, a lady. So Pastor Grant said, we need to pray, make declaration. My declaration that I'm making, that people should make, you are making a different declaration. I said, Jesus. You are saying, Christo. I didn't say that. But you want to prove a point. All of a sudden, your, your, your prayer movement is different. Moteka, moroso, motika. And by the side of the lady or the brother, you know, you want the brother to see. Sometimes you pray and you do this, you know, <laughs> to give the brother attention. Flesh. I'm, I'm being pragmatic. Because if I don't... If I, if I don't tell you, like, you will not understand. So I am telling you. Pray. <laughs> I remember one time, this is the last example I will give. <laughs> Man, I've seen things. <laughs> When I used to be in Maryland with the old man, you know, we have started action and everything. <laughs> there was this lady that <laughs> anytime he sees the old man, you know, and me, I didn't even realize that most of us, but the old man have observed, you know, when he sees the old man, the head will be up praying, Motos, Mataya, 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 Mataya. <laughs> so one day we we're praying. <laughs> So the old man walking, Mataya, Mataya. The old man just walked and said, Put your head down. <laughs> Make your head straight. You like doing that anytime. And you know, the old man is very straightforward. He will embarrass you right now. So you like doing that. You don't have to lift up your head when you see me. Put your head straight. Pray. Pray normal. No. <laughs> that day we couldn't even pray. <laughs> Flesh. Flesh. We're looking at each other. We're just laughing. The prayer ended. You know, you don't need to do all that. Be in the spirit. Being in the spirit means that to you, even though you are in the midst of people, to you, it's just you and God. It's just you and God. Nobody else matters. It's just you and God pouring your heart onto him, praying in the spirit. And praying in the spirit, some of you may think that praying in the spirit, you have to carry yourself a certain way. Hey, mutusuko, mutaya, oh Lord. Because we do all kinds of, you know, charismatic Pentecostal people, eh? we do all kinds of crazy stuff. Like how the Bible says that we should walk in the spirit. You will be shocked that people have a walk of the spirit. They have a walk of the spirit. They will walk right now. You will be shocked. Walk of the spirit. So he say, if he says pray in the spirit, it doesn't mean that you must position yourself in a certain way. Or you must change your voice in a certain way. No. You don't need to do all that. Be yourself. Be normal. Look at someone and say, be normal. be normal. And just pray. 
and just pray. Pour your heart to God. Pray in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. Supplication. Telling God the desires of your heart, your needs, talking to him about it in the spirit. In the spirit. I want to conclude. There was a young man who was interested in this young girl. <coughs> now, both of them are believers, and this young man wants to prove that he's very spiritual and everything. So, he lives in a studio, you know, because he's a bachelor, young guy, in a studio. He had only one couch in the living room. Now, he invited this lady to his apartment. Like I said, he is interested in the lady, but he wants to be spiritual. So he has only one couch. He has done dry clean, and so the dry clean, he has taken his dry clean and put it on the chair, leaving just one side of the sofa that just one person can sit on it. And then he prayed this prayer. God, if truly Jennifer is my wife, if truly Anita is my wife, if truly Mary is my wife, when she comes in, let her sit here. <laughs> But the question here is this. You don't have any adapter anywhere. <laughs> but the thing is this. He wants to be spiritual. He wants to spiritualize it. So the lady came, obviously. So they said, praise the Lord. The Lord has spoken. All I see. All lies. All lies. It's fleshly. It's fleshly. It's fake. It's not in the spirit. It's not. It's not in the spirit. Let's learn how to pray in the spirit. Please rise on your feet. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> how many of you have been blessed tonight? Yeah, tonight I wanted to be pragmatic so that you can get it. Hallelujah. Amen. Having said that also, you know, we are about to pray. Having said that also, it doesn't mean that today, because of all that I've said, you don't know how to pray. You don't know if you should move. <laughs> or you should stand. You don't know what to say. And, and today, you, you, after, uh, after this teaching, you just made a, hey, from today I will pray a contemplative prayer. You know what a contemplative prayer? You just stand there attention and you are praying in your mind. Please. There is, I don't want any contemplative prayer before you sleep on me. Amen. Don't worry. One thing that I know is that all of you here, you pray in the spirit. Somebody say, I pray in the spirit. And so I want you to feel free in case the devil wants to confuse you that, hey, you are the one pastor is talking. <laughs> pastor is talking about, you see your movement, you see all that you are doing. Listen, if you have to do karate to kill the devil, do it. <laughs> Martial art, kung fu, is allowed as long as it's in the spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> and so I want you to feel free and let yourself go. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to look at two people and ask them, are you ready for the prayer no if they don't re if they don't respond change go talk to somebody else hallelujah amen i want you to turn your bibles to psalm 34 
Psalms is in the Bible. Look at somebody and say, I bet you Psalms is in the Bible. <laughs> Pastor Paul said, Open your phones. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I want to repeat that again. I will bless the Lord at all times. Do you hear the word at all times? No. Did you hear the word at all times? It means that you don't only bless the Lord when he does something favorable for you. Or you have a miracle, or you have a breakthrough, or you have a testimony. That is when you bless the Lord. It means that even when the miracle has not come yet, and you are expecting the miracle, when the testimony has not come yet, and you are expecting the testimony, you still praise the Lord in advance of the miracle, in advance of the testimony, in advance of the healing, in advance of the breakthrough. And so David said, I will bless the Lord at all, not sometime, at all times. His praise shall continually continue, continue, present continuous, continually be in my mouth. In other words, I don't care what the devil is doing. I will still praise him. I don't care what my circumstance is right now and my situation is right now. I will still praise him continually. Next verse. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. So that is the prayer point. So let me break this down and then we start praying. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Let me tell you, there is something that moves heaven quicker than any other thing. And that is when you begin to brag on God concerning something that you are expecting him to do that he has not yet done. When you begin to brag, God, I thank you for my healing, but the disease is there. I thank you for my healing, but the ailment is there. The symptoms are there. They are showing. But you thank him as your healer. I thank you that you are my deliverer. But the situation is still there. But you are thanking him in advance as your deliverer. You see, one of the most burdensome things that you can put on yourself or anybody can put on you is this. When she comes to me and she said, Pastor Grant, I am going to do this for you. She has not done it, but she says she is going to do this for me. And I say, thank you. When I say thank you, it means that you are obliged right. to do it. Because I am thanking you in advance for what you have not yet done. And so it puts you under pressure to do it. Put you under pressure to do it. Anytime I tell my mom, you know, that, oh, mom, I'm going to send you something. <laughs> Said, my son, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord prosper you. Wherever the money is coming from, may the Lord replenish it. Amen. Now, anytime she does that, maybe I am not ready at that time. I'm planning that it be a week or three days or two weeks. I will, but by that prayer, it put pressure on me that I want to send the money right away. Because he ha she has prayed for me 
concerning something that I have not yet done. And so when David says that my soul will boast in her, my soul will boast. In other words, he will brag on God concerning things that he has not yet done. And by bragging on him, he will do it. So when I say, God, you are my healer, he looks at the 24 elders and the angels say, hey, he's calling me his healer. Yes. Go show him that I'm a healer. Yes. God, you are my deliverer, you are my fortress, you are my stronghold. Yes. Do you hear what she just said? She said, I am his stronghold. I am his fortress. Make sure that that deliverance she receives it, Amen. bragging on God. Tonight, the prayer will be different. Amen. I want you to brag on God. Amen. How do you brag on God? Brag on God concerning the things that you want him to do for you and the things you want to see, the manifestation, the breakthroughs, the miracle, the open door, the job opportunity, whatever it is that you are believing God for, begin to brag on him as if he has already done it and you will see him do it. Amen. Do you understand? Yes. Let your soul boast in the Lord. Are you ready? I don't know what it is that you are believing him for. But I want you to brag on him. Open your mouth, clap your hands, and begin to pray. Maria Capo Papa, Recapulia Capo Papa, take a Maria Capo Papa, Maria Capo Papa, brag on him concerning that job, brag on him concerning that relationship, brag on him concerning your finances, concerning your career, your calling, your ministry, brag on him concerning his glory, brag on him concerning your peace, your tranquility. Maria Capo Papa, Recapulia. Saka matua kapiri ya kato kape reka poli ya kato papa reka poli ya saka matua kapa reka poli ya kato papa reka poli ya kato papa reka poli ya kato papa teke pele marua kape papa reka poli ya saka matua kape Maria kapo li ya kato papa reka poli ya kato papa teke pele marua kato papa reka panto Rakapolia <laughs> Maria Capo Papa, Racapolia Capo Papa, Tecabelea Cape Papa, Racapolia Sacamba to a cape, Racapelia Capo Papa, Racamba to a cape papa, Recapolia Capo Papa, Racapanto a cape papa, Recapolia Capo Papa, Racapolia Capo Papa, Tecabelea, Marua Capelia Capo Papa, Racapolia Capo Papa, Racapan. Tiki Billy Ekebe, Marua Cape Papa, Racapolia Capo Papa, Racapelia Capo Papa, Tiki Billy Acapa, Racapolia Capo Papa, Racapanta Yacape, Lea Capo Papa, Malua Capelia Cape Papa, Malua Cape, Babalia Cape Papa, Malia Capo, Babalia Cape, Recapolia Soke Pato, Recapolia Capo Papa, Malia. Cape papali a capi papali a capi raka peli a capo re capoli a capu papali a capi papa 
Malua Capedi Acapo, Racamantu Acapo Papa, Racapeli Acapo Papa, Racapoli Acapo Papa, Racapoli Acapo Papa, Racapoli Acapante, Marua Capeli Acapo Papa, Racapanto Copo Papa, Racapoli Acapo Papa, Recapantu Acape Papa, Recapoli Acapo Papa, Racapoli Acapo Papa, Racapanta Yacapo Papa, Recapoli Acapo Papa, Racapoli Acapo Papa, Taye, Racapoli Acapo Papa, Racapoli Acapo Papa, Racapo Tayo Capa, Recapoli Acapo Papa, Racapata Yacapa, Racapoli Acapo Papa, Marua Capelli Acape Papa, Racapo Tayo Cape, Recapoli Aso Capate, Malua Cape Papa, Malia Cape Papa Lua Cape, Rocopo Tayo Cape, Recapoli Acapo Papa, Racapoli Acapo Papa, Racapelli Acapo Papa, Racapoli Acapo Papa, Racapo Papa, Recapoli Acapo Papa, Recapoli Acapo Papa, Recapoli Aso Matua Cape Papa, Recapoli Acapo Papa, Racapanti Acapo Papa, Recapoli Acapo Papa, Lia Capo Papa, Tecapele, Marua Capoli Acapo Papa, Racapoli Acapo Papa, Tecapele, Marua Capeli Acapo Papa, Racapoli Acapo Papa, Rocopoli Acape Papa, Racapoli Acapo Papa, Recapoli Aso Capete, Marua Cape Papa, Racapanto Acape Papa, Recapoli Acape Papa, Recapoli Acapo Papa, Racapo Tayo Cape, Recapiri Acate Cape, Racapanto Copo Papa, Recapoli Acapo Papa, Racapiri Acato Cape, Racapanto Copo Papa, Recapoli Acapo Papa, Racapoli Acapo Papa, Racapiri Acate Cape Papa, Recapoli Acapo Papa, Racapoli Aso Capata, Recapoli Acapo Papa, Racapo Tayo Cape, Racapili Acapo Papa, Recapoli Acapo Papa, Racapanto Acapo Papa, Recapoli Acape Papa, Racapanto Acape Papa, Racapoli Acapo Papa, Racapoli Acapo Papa, Recapoli Acapo Papa, Decapele, Maru Acapo Papa, Racapoli Acapo Papa, Recapoli Acapo Papa, Racapoli Acapo Papa, Recapoli Acapo Tayo Papa, Racapo Decapele Acapa, Racapoli Acapo Papa, Recapoli Acapo Papa, Recapoli Acape Papa, Recapoli Aso Capato Cape, Recapoli Acapo Papa, Racapanto Acapo Papa, Racapoli Acapo Papa, Recapoli Acape Papa, Recapante Cape Papa, Recapoli Acapo Papa, Recapoli Acapo Papa, Bragon Him, Concerning the Job, Bragon Him, Concerning the Position, Bragon Him, Concerning that Exam, Bragon Him, Concerning that Attack, in the Name of Jesus, Malia, Roko Papa, Rakapo Tayo Papa, Recapoli Acapo Papa, Roko Poli Acapo, Recapo Tayo Cape, Recapoli Acapo Papa, Recapoli Acapo Papa, Recapanto Acape, Recapoli Aso Papa, Maru Acape Papa, Recapo Tayo Cape, Recapoli Acapo Papa, Lea Cape Papa, Tecapele Acape, Recapoli Acape Papa, Rocopo Sacamate, Recapoli Acapo Papa, Recapoli Acape Papa, Recapoli Acape Papa, Recapo Tecapele Papa, Recapoli Acapo Papa, Recapoli Acape Papa, Recapoli Acapo Papa, Recapoli Acapo Papa, Recapanto Acapo Papa, Recapoli Acapo Papa, Recapoli Aso Capato, Recapoli Acapo Papa, Recapoli Acapo Papa, Rocopoli Acapo Papa, Recapoli 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 Acap
In the name of Jesus. Turn your Bibles to Psalm 36, the verse number 7 and 8. Psalm 36, the verse number 7 and 8. How excellent is thy loving kindness, O God. Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. I will repeat it again. How excellent is thy loving kindness, O God. Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. Is there somebody here that is putting his trust under the shadow of the wings of the almighty God? In other words, our hope, our confidence, our in and all is in him. Without him, we can do nothing. That is looking up to heaven, asking heaven, depending on heaven. Look at what the verse 8 says. Those who put their trust and their confidence in God and those who bring themselves under the shadow of the wings of the Almighty, this is what happens for them. They shall be abundantly satisfied. Amen. Abundantly satisfied. You see, during the midnight prayers, I keep on saying this. Don't put your confidence in any connection. Don't put your confidence in any man. Don't put your confidence in your resume. Don't put your confidence in your credential. Put your confidence in heaven, Amen. in God. Amen. Put your confidence. And don't try to figure it out that this is how he's going to do it. Leave it for him to do it. Amen. Leave it for him to do it. Amen. Put in your everything in him. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of their, thy house. Fatness of thy house. Abundantly satisfied with the fatness. Fatness of thy house. In other words, the blessing, the, the major blessing, the, the big blessings. God said, because you have put your trust and your confidence in him, he is going to give you that. Amen. Satisfy you with that. Amen. Reward you abundantly for putting your trust and your confidence in him. And he said, thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasures. You shall make them drink the river of thy pleasures. And you know, it is predicated on you putting your trust in God. Putting your confidence, putting your in and all in him. And if you are going to drink from the rivers of the pleasures of the almighty, it means that there is no sorrow. 
there is no tears there is no pain there is no anxiety anxiousness there is nothing like fear and intimidation because you are drawing from the lord from the rivers of his pleasure somebody say my trust trust is is in god i want you also to say this month this month and the coming month and the coming month i will enjoy i will enjoy the fatness the fatness of the house of the house my soul my soul will be satisfied will be satisfied my spirit my spirit will be satisfied will be satisfied my heart my heart will be satisfied will be satisfied with the abundance with the abundance of god of god abundance abundance of blessings of blessings abundance abundance of favor of favor abundance Abundance, abundance of breakthroughs, of breakthroughs abundance, abundance of miracles, of miracles abundance, abundance of honor, of honor abundance, abundance of, elevation. of elevation. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I want you to pray and tell God that God bless me with the fatness of your house. In the name of Jesus, clap your hands and begin to pray. Rakapolia Sakamatua, Rakapota Yakapaya, Rakapolia Kapo Papa, Rakapati Kipele Akapo, Rakapolia Sokepe, Marua Kape Papa, Rakapatoa Kapo Papa, Rakapolia Kape Papa, Rakapolia Kapo Papa, Tikibele Akapa, Malua Kape Papa, Malia Kapolua Kape Papa, Malua Kape Papa. Malia Kape Papa Lua Kape Papa Malia Kape Papa Malia Kapo Papa Lia Kape Papa Rika Puri Akapo Malia Kapo Papa Tikibiri Akapo Malua Kape Papa Kape Papa Roko Popsa Papa Tia Malia Kape Papa Lia Kapo Malia Kape Papa Lia Kape Papa Lia Malua Kape Papa Malua Kape Papa Lia Kape Malia Kape Papa Malia kapo, reka po sakambatua, reka po liya kapo papa, malia kapi papa luwa kate, raka po sakara, malia kape papa liya kape papa, malia kape papa liya kape papa, roko po seke perea, malia kapo liya kape papa liya kape, reka po saka, matua kapo liya kapo papa, raka matua kape papa, raka biria. Kato kape papa, re kapoli ya kapo papa, ra kapoli ya kapo papa, re kapoli ya soke papa, ra kapo ya kape papa, ra kapoli ya kape papa, ra kapoli ya kape papa, ra kapoli ya kapo papa, te kape re, maru ya kapoli ya kapo papa, re kapoli ya kape papa, ra kapoli ya kape papa, re kapoli ya kape papa, ro kapoli ya soke papa. Marua kape papa, re kapoli ya kapo papa, re kapoli ya kape papa, te kepele. Marua kape ya kapo papa, re kapanto ya kapo papa, re kapoli ya kapo papa, re kapiri ya kape kape, re kapoli ya soke pete. Marua kapoli ya kapo papa, re kapoli ya kape papa, re kapoli ya kapo papa, te kepele. Marua Ra kapoli ya kapo papa, ra kapoli ya kapo papa, ra kapoli ya kape papa, ra kapanti kepele ya, ra kapoli ya kapo papa, ra kapo sakabako, ra kapoli ya kapo papa, ra kapoli ya kape papa, malua kapeli ya kape papa, ra kapoli ya kapo papa, malua kapiri ya kato, ra kapoli ya kape papa, ra kapoli ya soke. Marua kapoli ya kapo papa, ra kapo kayo kapo papa, ra kapoli ya kapo papa, ra kapoli ya kapo papa, ra kapoli ya kapo teke pele. Marua kapoli ya kapo papa, ra kapoli ya sakabato, ra kapeli ya kapo papa, ra kapoli ya kapanta ye, ra kapoli ya kapo papa, ra kapato ya kapo papa, ra kapoli ya kapo papa. 
Rakapoli akapo papa, Rokopoli akapo papa, Rakapato akapo papa, Rakapoli akapo papa, Rekapoli akapo papa, Rekapeli akapo papa, Rakapota yo papa, Rakapoli akapo papa, Rakapoli asoke pato, Rekapota yo papa, Rakapoli akapo papa, Rakapato kopo papa, Rekapoli akapo papa. Raka poli yaka po papa, raka bato yaka po papa, raka bel yaka po papa, deke tele maru yaka poli yaka po, raka poli yaka po papa, raka poli yaka po papa, raka bato yaka po papa, raka poli yaka po papa, raka poli yaka po papa, raka poli yaka pe papa, raka bato yaka po papa, raka poli yaka po papa, raka poli yaka po papa. Roko poli akape papa, raka bato akape papa, raka poli asoke bato, raka poli akapo papa, 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 raka poli akape papa, raka bato akapo papa, raka poli akapo Papa, Roko Polia Capo, Papa, Tea, Reca Polia Capo, Papa, Reca Polia Soke Pato, Roko Polia Capo, Papa, Reca Polia Capo, Papa, Raka Batua Cape, Papa, Raka Polia Capo, Papa, Tikilia Cape, Marua Cape, Papa, Reca Polia Capo, Papa, Reca Polia Capo, Papa, Raka Batikilia Capo, Marua. Kapo papa teke pele, marua kape ya kapo papa, raka matua kape papa, raka poli ya kapo papa, raka bo teke pele kapo, raka poli ya kapo papa, raka matua kapo papa, raka bo tayo kape, raka poli ya kapo papa, raka piri ya kapo kape, raka poli ya kapo kapo kapa, raka bo teke pele ya kapo, raka Rakapoli akapo papa, Rakapoli akapo papa, Rakapoli akapo papa, Rakapoli akape papa, Rakapoli asakapato akapa, Rakapoli akapo papa, Rakapota yo kape, Rakapeli akapo papa, Rakapate pepe pepe, Malu akape pepe pepe, Rakape pepe pepe, Rakape pepe pepe, Maru akapoli akapo papa, Rakap. In the name of Jesus, you will enjoy the fatness of the land. Somebody say the fatness of the land. Somebody say the fatness of the land. I want you to know that before this year comes to an end, you will enjoy the fatness of the land. The blessings of God will overtake you. The favor of God will overtake you. The glory of God will overtake you. Where they thought you will fall, you will rise up. Where they thought you will fail, you will succeed. Yes. Somebody shout, I receive it. I receive it. I know beyond every reasonable doubt that before 31st, every request, every petition, every supplication that you have made known unto God, there shall be a performance. I said there shall be a performance. There shall be a manifestation. If you believe it, shout, I receive it. I receive it. When we come together on 31st, the crossover service, we will gather to praise God. We will gather to worship him. We will gather to thank him for everything that he has done. Listen to me. It is not too late. And it is not over until we have prevailed. It is not over until we have conquered. Amen. It is not over until we have the upper hand. Amen. It is not over until we have the victory. Yes. And I want you to know that your petition, your request, Quest that challenge, God will solve it. Amen. I said, God will surprise you. Amen. I said, God will surprise Amen. you. Amen. You will be so shocked, you will not recover from your shock. What God is going to do. They are saying they are saying one thing, but God is saying another. 
They are saying one thing, but we believe in the report of God. At the end, they will say, of a truth, your God is mighty. Your God is great. And uh, your Lord have heard your prayer. Amen. Before 31st. Somebody say before 31st. Before 31st. Somebody shout before 31st. Before 31st. I am telling you, some of you, it is happening now. Oh, yes. Now. Ah. It is happening now. Now. Right now. Right now. God is doing it. He is doing it. Because there shall be no carryover. You will not carry over any prophecy. You will not carry over any blessing. You will not carry over any breakthrough that is supposed to be happening for you in 2019 into 2020. That is not going to happen. Every blessing, every breakthrough, every miracle, every favor that you are believing God for, for 2019, you will see it happen. You will enjoy it before we cross over to 2020. If you believe, shout, I believe. I believe. That is what is going to happen. Thank you for watching this message. For more information about this message or the ministry, call us at 770-941-1934 or visit us online at eagleschapel.com.